Hi, my name is Nina Gonzaludo. I'm leading PGX and HLA market development activities here at PacBio. And today I'm going to talk to you about using long read sequencing for haplotyping and phasing of PGX alleles. So first, what is PGX? Pharmacogenomics, or PGX, utilizes genomic information to assess an individual's response to certain medications. Based on variation in pharmacogenes, certain people may need to increase or decrease dosage of a drug or switch to a different therapeutic in order to increase safety and efficacy. Pharmacogenes include phase one and phase two metabolizing enzymes, transporters, drug targets, and immune response genes. Variation in these genes can functionally impact enzyme activity, leading to variable phenotypes or metabolizer status, as shown here. And based on biobank studies in the US and the UK, it's estimated that almost 99% of individuals have at least one actionable PGX variant shown in the graph on the top right. It's also been estimated that in the US, roughly 50% of adults may be prescribed a drug for which a PGX guideline exists. So PGX can be used to predict adverse drug reactions or decreased efficacy, leading to improved health outcomes and decreased costs. So there are many platforms that have been developed for interrogation of pharmacogenes. Um, early tests using PCR-based methods or Sanger sequencing uh, were developed to assay specific variants in a single, in single gene tests. Um, and then researchers then adopted microarrays as a high throughput method for detection of common and known variants. Um, and then with the development of uh, next generation sequencing technology, this offered them the ability to interrogate entire genes, uh, not just the predefined variants. Um, but short read sequencing, despite being the predominant sequencing approach, falls short in key areas of PGX, which include some challenging and complex regions of the genome. Um, in one study by Yang et al., uh, they compared different sequencing platforms' ability to resolve the highly polymorphic um, and homologous CYP2D6 region, uh, shown in the red box in the figure on the left. Um, and the top panel shows off-target effects and misalignment in short read, whole genome, whole exome, and targeted panel data. Unlike long read sequencing, shown in the bottom panels, uh, the short reads do not span the entire 5KD large gene, hence the reads may misalign to the highly homologous CYP2D7 and CYP2D8 genes to the right. Um, and in addition, the short read sequencing technology struggles with high and low GC sequence content, and this will cause reduced accuracy. Uh, this can also be seen in the CYP2D6 genes in the low complexity regions. Additionally, phasing with short reads typically depends on the ability of trio data or imputation, which can be inaccurate in certain populations or result in ambiguous haplotype calls. All of these issues can lead to skewed and potentially inaccurate CYP2D6 variant calling. Um, using PacBio long reads, the authors were able to successfully cover the full CYP2D6 gene, characterize CYP2D6 CNBs, and the gene copies upstream and downstream of the duplicated alleles. Um, in this case, there were also no misalignments to the pseudogenes. Um, so in the next few slides, I will review recent work at PacBio leveraging different targeted approaches to capturing pharmacogene variation. The CYP2D6 gene is one of the most widely studied pharmacogenetic targets since it's involved in the metabolism of a quarter of all commonly used medications, including antidepressants, opioids, and cancer drugs. What makes the CYP2D6 gene particularly challenging to study is that in addition to being highly polymorphic with over 140 variants, including full gene deletions, um, tandem alleles and gene conversions, it's also highly prone to copy number variation. Additionally, as I mentioned before, um, CYP2D7 and CYP2D8 directly upstream are highly homologous with 97% and 92% exonic sequence similarity to CYP2D6. 
So this makes this region particularly challenging um, with some implementers needing to use multiple assays and platforms to fully capture variation with specificity um, in this gene. To fully capture the CYP2D6 variants, we developed an Amblicon-based streamlined end-to-end -end workflow in collaboration with a customer who is now taking it through full validation. For our initial study, we leveraged 22 uh, Coriel pharmacogenomic reference samples from GetRM with known CYP2D6 diplotypes. And here we amplified CYP2D6 variants using long-range PCR. M13 tail gene-specific primer sets for the amplification of upstream duplications, downstream CYP2D6 gene, and, this, and for the STAR5 uh, whole gene deletion were um, adapted from published papers. And then a two-step PCR with barcoded M13 primers was used to enable pooling of the samples for single smart bell library preparation, uh, which was sequenced on the PacBell SQL 2 and 2E systems. This protocol will soon be published and made available on the PacBio website. And it's also described in a poster here at ASHG. So running these samples on a smart cell 8M produced more than 1.6 million full-length hi-fi reads with an average read length of 7.4 KB and a median hi-fi quality of greater than 99.9% or QB31. After demultiplexing with SmartLink, we found that over 99% of the reads were on target to CYP2D6 with the figure on the right showing the alignment to specific sequences um, of the primers. So the 8.1 KB uh, black sequence mapping to the downstream 2D6 gene, um, the purple and orange uh, reads mapping to the star 36 and ind indicating upstream duplications and the 5.1 KB reads indicating a star five allele complete deletion. In terms of analysis, HiFi reads were demultiplex on the SmartLink version 10.0. Um, the multiplex HiFi reads were run through our new Amplicon analysis tool called PBAA, um, and we have a poster on this tool by John Harding, and it's also available on GitHub if you'd like to check it out. Uh, PBAA clustered the reads into haplotypes, and then the distinct alleles were then aligned to build 38 reference genome and assign CYP2D6 star alleles using an internal pipeline to derive diplotypes. To highlight again the value of phasing, the top right figure shows a single sample with 15 heterozygous variants across CYP2D6. And we can clearly see that all of these variants are on one strand with the star one wild type on the other strand. So this sort of phasing would have been difficult or impossible to do with other genotyping or short read sequencing platforms. For these samples, we found high concordance to the reference calls and in some cases, we were able to further refine the haplotypes based on phasing and the presence of alleles that were not able to be fully captured using previous technologies. In addition to single gene capture of CYP2D6, we've also been working on developing a probe-based targeted capture method and designed a PGX panel covering 43 pharmacogenes with IDT probes. This panel is around 935 KB, and it includes some challenging but important PGX genes like CYP2D6 and HLA. This work has been developed in collaboration with Stuart Scott, uh, director of the Stanford Clinical Genomics Lab. Uh, so briefly, the 24-plex enrichment workflow is shown here on the left. Uh, we begin with shear DNA, right now targeting 10 KB shear with G-tubes. Uh, next is end repair and A tailing, followed by ligation of linear barcoded adapters with M13 universal primer sites. Um, next is the first PCR using M13 primers. And then after PCR1, you quantify QC and pull multiple samples together. Um, and then to collect a 24 plex of samples, 24 separate PCR reactions were performed and batches of eight samples were pulled. After sample pooling comes probe high hybridization of the gene specific probes and the bound fragments are then pulled out with bead capture. Um, next is the second PCR to enrich for captured fragments 
and then Smart Bell library construction with no size selection. Um, prior to sequencing, the three different libraries, each containing the aplex of samples, are combined onto a single SQL2E cell and sequenced. Um, so this protocol has also um, been developed and will be made available soon on the PacBio website. And we have a poster here presented by Dan Portig that I also encourage you to check out. So as I mentioned, um, the PGX panel covers 43 genes, including full gene capture of 19 genes as shown in the top left um, for challenging regions. And for more straightforward variants, single SNPs were designed. Um, genotype data showed high variant calling concordance with genome in a bottle reference data, including great performance in complex regions like CYP2D6. Preliminary multiplex data on 24 samples yielded 200 to 400 fold coverage per sample per smart cell, um, as shown in the top left plot, um, suggesting that further multiplexing may be possible. On a SQL 2E, this yielded a mean read quality of Q41 with a mean high phi read length of 7 kb. And the bottom left figure shows that there is variable coverage across the 43 genes, and we're currently optimizing the probe sets to address this. Overall, the preliminary data from this targeted panel has been excellent. Um, using HiFi reads, we're able to capture variation that other technologies have struggled with. And we're also able to get fully phased diplotype resolution with HiFi reads. For example, the sample clearly shows a full gene deletion or star five on one strand and the star four variant on the other, matching the reference star allele call for the sample. So in summary, HiFi sequencing allows for highly accurate, comprehensive calling of key pharmacogenes. And we've shown that the HiFi reads produce data that is highly concordant with other technologies with the added ability to directly phase and detect CNVs and other complex variants. Um, there's still further work to do, especially best practices around automating ha haplotype and diplotype calling based on the long reads. Um, and as I mentioned before, we have these customer collaboration protocols um, that have been developed and uh, will be made available soon on our website. With that, I'd like to thank the following people, um, including Stuart Scott and Yao Yang at Stanford. Um, and I encourage you to check out our ASHT posters. Thanks. <laughs>